Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com and you're here today to learn how to paint furniture in six steps. Now this is going to be fast, it's going to be easy. This old roll top desk is going to be completely transformed. I'm going to make it look modern and fresh and new and not tired like it does now. It's going to take very little time so just join me and you'll see exactly how easy this is. So step one is to disassemble your furniture. Now I'm pulling out any drawers. I'll be disassembling any pieces that can kind of come apart. And so in the case of a roll top desk, the top comes off the base. So I've already unscrewed all of the screws from below and everything is nice and portable at this point. It makes it so that it's not quite so heavy. And if you have any embellishments like this that need to come off, you're just going to go ahead, take a putty knife like I have and pull it off just like that. Now I do have two little holes left behind, so let's take care of those now and fill those in at this point. I'm using a product called Plastic Wood, and you can see here, it's really sticky, almost like peanut butter, so all I really need here is just a tiny little bit right here at the top. Fill those in, let that dry just a second or two, and now I can take my sandpaper and sand that nice and flat. And you can see just how quickly this product dries. Step two is roughing the surface up. Now even though I'm using primer specifically formulated to adhere to almost any surface, I like to use some sandpaper or steel wool on the surface. It gives it some nice grooves and almost teeth to have that primer adhere directly to the surface even better. So because my desk has some moving parts here, I'm a little more concerned that it's going to peel and chip over time. So I just want to make sure that it's going to receive the best foundation possible. Now the way that I'm going to do that is with with a 100 grit sandpaper or with very fine steel wool. So this is 0000 steel wool. Really, really soft. You can hold it with bare hands and not have it affect your fingertips. And no matter which one you choose, either one is great for this purpose. But the great thing about the sponge sandpaper, it's really flexible. It has a point on one end and it's flat on the other. It can go directly into these grooves and get a nice precision mark here. So that way you're making sure that you're getting into each and every little nook and cranny. So this is what I'm using for my project. I'm going over the whole thing and it's just honestly going to be that fast. So one swipe back and forth, that's all I really need to do. And then I can go ahead and take each area and make sure that I'm getting around each and every little crevice. So it's just as fast as that. Now if you have an area where you might have a large scratch or gouge, you can use a mouse sander on it. You can use whatever grit sandpaper is appropriate for the depth of that scratch. So I'm just quickly going to use this on my scratches. I have a few, so it'll just take a minute or two. Step three is to clean the surface of the furniture. Now what I'm using today are odorless mineral spirits, but just because they're odorless doesn't mean they're fume free. And so you notice I'm in the garage, I have the garage doors open, so I have a constant stream of fresh air flowing through so that I don't get overcome by fumes. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a rag, I'm going to put a little bit of mineral spirits onto that rag, and then wipe it onto the surface. So I'm just making sure that I'm cleaning off all of the oil, grease, and grime that might be on this surface surface. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to take some tack cloth and I'm going to rub the tack cloth over the entire surface, making sure that I get off every speck of dust from the sanding process. So I have the ultimate setup here. I'm using these Home Right spray shelters. Uh, they're really great because if you're using spray paint like I am today, it's going to contain a lot of that overspray. And actually the larger version has a little tent area where you can put yourself inside of it. If you have a respirator, you're good to go. So I have all of my doors open. That's really, really important. You don't want to be breathing this in. I have really great air circulation for this. So what I'm using today is a product called Bullseye 123 by Zinzer. The 
this is really wonderful because it sticks to all surfaces. All you need to do is follow all those prep instructions that I gave you, making sure that this is a nice clean surface for this to adhere to. It'll adhere to glass, it'll adhere to metal, it'll adhere to anything glossy surfaces, which is really what we're concerned with because even though we knock this down, there's still a little gloss left over. I really like using spray paint for a large project like this. The reason why is even though if I use latex paint, I could paint it indoors and avoid fumes, if I take it outside and use spray paint, I'll be able to preserve some of the graining in the wood. The reason why that's so important is if I went ahead and painted it with latex paint, I'd have a very smooth surface when I was finished. This way, I'll preserve some of the graining and it won't look like a giant block. That's what I'm trying to avoid. I'd like it to look a little bit more interesting. Interesting. So it's a satin finish that I'm using. I'm starting out with the white primer and I'm turning to black for the finished product. So it's going to be perfect. Don't worry about the two colors. It's going to work out really well. It's going to adhere perfectly and it's going to provide a wonderful finish. I'm also using this comfort grip attachment. It attaches to any spray can and makes the entire process of dispensing paint on your project that much easier. Your hands won't fall asleep, especially if you have a large project to do like I do. I've placed a furniture dolly underneath every single piece of furniture that I'm painting today. It makes it really easy to move around and turn as you're working on the project. And I've also covered the floor with a giant tarp because spray paint tends to fly a little bit. You don't want your floor getting messed up in the process. So make sure you have things covered in your area wherever you're working just to make sure that the spray paint doesn't adhere to things that you don't want it to. I put on a pair of disposable gloves and I have a dust mask. Now the dust mask isn't going to prevent me from breathing in fumes, that's what opening windows and doors is going to do. What the dust mask is going to allow for is to not breathe in little droplets of paint. So I'm making sure I have my dust mask on. If you have a respirator, go ahead and put that on. If you're in an area that doesn't have good air circulation, that's what you need to do. That's a beautiful fine finish already. What I've done is I've shaken my can for one minute just to make sure that everything's all mixed in together. That's an absolute must anytime you're using spray paint. So let me show you the process. I'm going to take the can, I'm going to start it off the project, spray it, and then finish off the project. Makes it really nice and even. So watch what I'm doing here with the drawers. I have a brown grocery bag and I'm just going to go ahead and protect the interior with the grocery bag. And if you have larger drawers where the bag won't reach, you just use some painter's paper like this and go ahead and use that. So I hope you can see how it's preserving the grain underneath this as I'm spraying over the top. You're still going to see some of the grain shining through with the spray paint and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Well now I'm moving on to the hardest part. I need to get into each and every one of these little cubbies and fortunately the can allows you to spray in any angle. But what I need to do is make sure that I'm shaking a little bit here and there just to make sure it doesn't clog up in the process. At this point, I'm looking over the entire project just to make sure that I didn't miss any spots. Everything looks really good, so at this point, I'm letting it dry for 30 minutes before we get going with step number five, which is the paint. And when you're done, go ahead and wipe the tip with the mineral spirits to get it nice and clean for the next use. I'm using Rust-Oleum spray paint for this. Now this is a paint and primer and you might be wondering why I'm using a primer underneath it and it really is to make sure that it adheres to that existing finish. So even if it says paint and primer, it's not the right product. You really do need to use a primer underneath it. So this is a color called Canyon Black. It's a satin finish so it's not going to be terribly glossy and it's not going to be terribly dull. It's going to be just right. So one of the biggest problems that I see with spray paint finishes is that the application is only done in one direction. Now you do need to keep a, you know, kind of a wet edge here so that everything kind of melds together and looks like one continuous surface, but you really do need to go back in the adjacent direction because when you do that, you're going to even everything out. 
everything's going to be nice and level and even. So now I'm going back in this direction and you can see hopefully on camera that everything is getting nice and even out. I don't have any thin spots, I don't have any thick spots. So this is exactly what you need to do to get a perfect finish on a piece of furniture. And then let's not forget all of our little metal pieces here. These go on the little baby drawers. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean these off with mineral spirits. I'll prime them and then I'll paint them a metallic color that's not gold. Well, it's 24 hours later and I'm ready for step number six, which is reassembling the furniture. But before I do that, I wanted to show you the beautiful, flawless finish that I created with spray paint. You know, if you take your time, which is really the thing here, you don't want to rush this process. By starting off the project, spraying the project, and finishing off the project, it really makes for a beautiful, flawless finish. And by spraying in one direction and then turning and spraying in the adjacent direction, you're making sure that this is a beautiful, nice, even coat over the entire surface. Everything is assembled and I've managed to give this desk a new lease on life. I've given it a gorgeous finish by following a six step process that you can also follow very easily. I've chosen this black color which actually makes it really easy. Anytime I get a scratch or a nick I can touch it up with a sharpie marker and have it blend seamlessly in place. So there are tons of colors you can choose from too. You'll get a gorgeous finish on yours. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you know of somebody that can benefit it from watching it, please share it with them and go to my website, ReneeRomeo.com, where you'll find all kinds of great videos just like this that are going to help you repurpose things around your home too.